Hi everybody, it's Matthew, your favorite leader of the VA. Today we're reviewing issue 50 of Sonic IDW, and you already know the all-stars besides George Truly, Jared, Hammer Brother, Paper Hammer Brother, Joe Critter, Dax, Sword Unit 99, Jimbo, Charlie, Camel White, Spirit Guy, Bob Woolley, Jesse, and Jeff. And boy oh boy, has this issue got me all riled up like a wiggler who lost a flower on his head to evildoers. In a good way, though. Yes, Lord Matthew, the time has come for the fate of the Eggman Empire. Does it belong to an illegal usurper like Starline, or to its rightful ruler, Dr. Evo Eggman Robotnik? Definitely the extra. I don't know, but let's find out. We begin with Sonic, Tails, and Bell run running to Acrotropolis to stop Eggman or ever Starling from gathering all the Batniks into a massive army. Hammer, Sonic notes that Eggman is to make a big presentation while Tails says he usually comes to some kind of declaration. Bell says she needs to see this through, politely declining Sonic's offer to sit his one out. Orbot reports that Starling, Tails, and Bell are in approach with Please Starling in the words. Cubot sends Sturge and Kit to fight them on the double. He later rants that he finally has it all. Through all the plotting, planning, and frustrations, his dream to remake the VA status quo of Eggman and his bannings for Sonic time and time again has finally come to fruition. Starline breaks that Surge and Kit will destroy Sonic and Tails. His brainwashed Eggman bannings will destroy all and get the extra to his side, saying, Look at me! I'm a big bad doctor! You don't need oversights, villainous allies, and their armies from other worlds you're friendly with, and a robot army that's almost entirely powered by animals. As if nothing can ruin his big trap. <laughs> Well, I'm passing this teeny problem to Dak. <laughs> Thanks, Jimbo. That teeny problem, Dr. Eggman simply answers, Excuse me, Doctor. You're in my seat. Well, I'm the Egg Emperor ready to kick Starline's ass 101 ways to hell. Eggman begins by stabbing the window with the Egg Emperor's spear to kill Starline, though the Doc dodges that by putting his tricorder speed while praising his entrance, as he hoped it didn't have to come to this. But it has, Kama. Eggman asks if he knew he would kill him, but Starline says he didn't want to embarrass him with his tricor to power to damage the Emperor. Sonic wonders why Eggman is destroying his own city, but Tails clarifies he's fighting Starline while Bell's conserved with Metal Sonic, who's roughed up by Surge and vows to fix him since she couldn't save Motobud. Let's just hope she doesn't corrupt him to being a nice robot. Sonic tells Bell to be careful while Tails brings out that Metal Sonic was de-weaponized after his Neo self took over Angel Island. While Eggman was Mr. Tinker and the resistance slash restoration didn't know about Starline. Starline tries to bring up his point about metal, but is snatched by Surge while Tails is taken off guard by the kids. Tendrils must Bell's his mate. Bell sees a lot of brainwashed bandings ranging from another buzzer to a megaboo and a slicer about to attack her metal Sonic, their own friend. Tails and Kit begin their fight with the water fox freaking reducing himself so Tails frees himself with his tails and repels any additional tendrils that try to attack him. He later asks why he's Kit's target, and there has to be a misunderstanding, though Kit tells him it's by design and calculates it would take approximately 118 milliliters of water and 40 seconds to drown the poor fox, saying it shouldn't take long with a dark smile and a glowing red eye. Brr. We cut the surgeon's side, duking down their long awaited duel while the blue bear and murderer of Villain Lord knows how many bad things has who she is while the time is so dang fast, so Sonic can do a railing and screeches to a stop. Sonic coughs and asks again while introducing himself while Surge says she already knows who he is, that's all she knows, which is a problem. She rants how she's all Sonic's fault, while Starling Eggman may be part of the problem, we're looking down to Sonic himself, since if he had killed the Doctor, she would not have been made. I feel like this reminds me of something. Of all the people I've murdered, I let you live. I never kept count. I did. I know. I love you for it. says if it goes against Sonic's moral code, he could have just quit while he was still ahead. She later goes on how he keep fighting, keeps fighting the Eggman Empire, giving Eggman Starling the reason to continue their schemes again and again while his world loves him. When we actually love the Eggman versus Sonic dynamic. Cracking with electricity, Surge vows she's going to end it all while Sonic says she spoke too fast and tries again. And Jason still once more and asks who she is while Surge finally decides to answer Sonic's question and boasts that his speed of sound can't compete with her speed of light, though Sonic speeds around and lands some hits on Surge, who begins a counterattack. Meanwhile, Eggman says he never expected Starling to be so cunning, but it says it's all falling in place when mentions that the radio and facilities didn't match Zavox MO. He looked at how to escape from prison, but then the Warren had some choice words about his involvement, calling the next his brazen viciousness. Eggman asks where the link Doc is hiding, while Starling vows the plan can be salvaged, and remembers that he has 
quick escape route built into the command tower. Link Doc mentioned that if he takes the height of the tower, the speed is safely escapes as well as the prep time to launch the Emperor while flying back to the tower, and here's that far away, and he has more in storage, prompting Starline to go there in his tricorder speed. I mean, calls out Starline for retreating until standing the ground so he can anonymize him. A fist and attacks the Emperor's shield along some green blast, revealing that Starline is piloting the Egg Robo from the Lost Hex operation. Starline praises Eggman for such a marvelous armory, though the good Doc staffs his hijack Egg Robo mech. The Emperor's spear, but Starling counters by grabbing the spear and the shield, will begging him to stop and listening, saying his plan will work and the world will be theirs. Eggman fires some missiles from the Emperor, saying that he doesn't share the world except with the villains he deems worthy, like Dr. Wily, and that if Starling really understood him, he wouldn't sell for less, and it's all or nothing, which of course Starling is nothing before the extra. Taking a break from the action, Belle's in the process of fixing the metal sonic, though she wears that the hiding spots. You see, for long, even with metals back online, he would have been infected by Starling's virus, remembering that her and no blood were under perceivable influence, unless she acts as a rider and uses the Zevi Zapper to block the control signal and pull on the Doctor's tough creation. Metal Sonic wakes up and looks like he's going to attack Bell, who freaks out that he's still a killer robot by default, bracing for the worst, but turns out he just saved her from a motor bug that was going to attack it. It turns out that Metal Sonic recognizes Bell as Egg Tech, while his connection to the Ignat also lets him know where Eggman is at. After realizing the reason she came to Atropolis, she lets Metal lead her to her father while making sure she, he doesn't get out of range. Returning to the action, Kit and Tails fight some more, while the Fox emit says fakes control of his water powers to impress him as a curiosity. Kit's curiosity and giving Tails an idea. Tail lavishes Kit with praise, saying he hadn't seen that kind of tech in forever. His hydro pack is way cooler, though Kit says it's not his. Tails says it takes a lot of skill and finesse to operate such a device, but Kit asks why Tails is being nice to him since he's trying to destroy him. Tails tells Kit they could, that they could find some common ground and has towns are unique, since everyone doesn't appreciate the uniqueness. Kip shitting a brief layer. Tails mentions he knows a thing or two about being different because he was born with two tails rather than one and took a lot of practice to get a handle on them, though it wasn't easy. It seems that Kip didn't have that kind of help unless you talk about it, but Kip screams, I don't need any friends. Tails says it's okay since he's fighting with competitive rivalry and asks if they can work toward that, causing Kip to have a mental breakdown, is more concerned about Search not being here to help him. It's vulnerability and vitality creeps up Tails, who decides to handle it carefully. He asks if he can join Kit, causing the fake Tails to ask what he's doing, and Tails informs him to call truce until they got the deed sorted out. Kit reluctantly agreeing while Flash Lightning comes on. Tails thanks Kit for agreeing to truce and asks what's going on with the bad news. Kit replying that Dr. Stalin, who illegally has separated him in Empire, summoned all of them into a massive army. After remembering the name, Tails mentions that Starling tried to kidnap him to get his DNA and asks if Starling hurt him, causing Kit to remember all the gaslighting from his hypno glove and screams he hates him in a fashion that make Anakin's dark side proud while respect for true violently. Tails wants to stop the lame dog and asks as if he and Kit didn't do it together, much to Kit's uneasiness with Tails replying it's what heroes do. Kit asks what will happen after that, though Tails assures they must take it one step at a time and stop when the doc's plans come first. Kit agrees, and Tails replies it's time to fight Sonic, but Kit refuses, saying Surge must destroy Sonic because it's all she wants and won't let Tails stop her, but his red eyes going vicious. Speaking of Surge and Sonic, we cut back to their fight where Sonic is in a sprint dash and while Surge is about to punch him, but they bounce off each other. Sonic and Surge take a moment to catch their breath, while the Woobers say it's been a while since he had a tussle like this and hopes Surge is having a fun fight. I don't like her reaction to that question, Jim, but because Surge says Sonic is not supposed to be having fun, and is to duel to the death, electricity cracking those Sonic says he's gotten used to fights like this, and mentions fighting a few folks with the I was wrong for the world, so I'll destroy it, thing. Kind of like the ultimate life form, such a robot and critics creation before him available ally of Sonic later puts past behind him. Surge replies to not and it's who she is, going off the wall so fast, but Sonic appreciates and slides like Mega Man, causing Surge to spin and fall. He later says he doesn't know the full backstory, and can't judge her, but doesn't want her to hurt anyone. Surge calls Sonic to end his destructive battle, but Sonic refuses, giving her a chance to rebound. Surge calls him out on it. Sonic says he likes to keep simple, and he lives for the moment, wanting to see the world and find all its thrills and adventures, enjoying them in the process, and wishes everyone could have the same feeling, saying, wouldn't it be fair if we took that chance to rebound. Sonic made peace with his enemies to know that there's a better way, and is willing to shock this up to a rocky start with them having a do-over. Surge asks her to just like that, and Sonic says, yes, even Dr. Zayman Starline. So Surge asks if she can choose who she wants to be, and Sonic says, that's the point of reinventing. Surge would like to see the world. Yeah, see the world is what, Jeff? Or a playground? An asylum? A place that rejected her? Begging her to death to come in and take her away? No, it's not like that, Jimbo, because because she volunteered work for Starling of her own free will. She's like infinite back when he was just an old giant clones of the older mercenary. He didn't, she didn't have anything good going on in life, and she, she was getting no one trying to find her. Sorry if I got you or Trevor those questions, Jeff, but so, she charges up her electricity and Sonic says they'll do it her way, showing she wants her freedom to do is she, please with no regrets. Thankfully, Sonic dodges and kicks her, but Surge swing back 
seeing that she was built to end him, his morals, friends, and the world will bring it down dead on the ashes. Yeesh, Shimba, hear me in the creeps. Sonic touches her again and mentions he will not search, take that from anyone else, saying she chose to be a problem from the first moment they fought. Coming back to Good Dog versus Lame Doc, Starline tries to talk some sense to the extra, saying he's doing this for him, firing some shots from the Robomex arm cannon. The Lame Man blocks them and wants it again for a shield again, and saying, says all he's doing is wasting his time wrecking his stuff and pissing him off. Starling commends the former idol as the Perry Mech pilot, but Eggman chose the wrong machine to face him and reveals a new power similar to the one that defeated the Eggman for four times over. The Tricord Blast! We see a similar blast of power from the Team Blast from Sonic Heroes, and the Eggman burst down with Starling warning, and that's what happens when Eggman doesn't plan for Kennedy's. However, Eggman tells him that Starling played himself in reality. He specifically chose the Egg Emperor, once he found out it was Starlame who raised his power core reserves. He continues his lecture, saying Starlame's obsession with Eggman's past exploits would give him tunnel vision, and he knew he would use their power to the fullest end, and he knew that Starlame would deplete to prove a point. Starlame realizes he's all out and says he's glad that Eggman sees things his way using Hypno Glove, though Eggman resisted by using his goggles and mentions that Starlame was very, very, very proud of that glove in particular. Oh, this is going as smooth as Cable's underbelly. Eggman asked Starline if he honestly thought he let the lame Doc stay by his hand with that kind of power on hand without precautions being taken. Starline shudders that Eggman actually listened but wonders how since he never acknowledges and shouts that it's not fair and he never showed this much foresight. Well, if reason to listen, he's just close to winning. Yeah, Jimbo, but Eggman gives Starline the beat down we all deserved and needed, thus finishing a bunch of one way to kick a slimy pineapple's tail in half. Now, if only he could do that. After finishing the status line to play a stream, Eggman gives Starling one last question, saying he didn't have any choice in the matter of the voice because of father, causing Eggman to divert his attention to Belle, who arrived on Metal Sonic. Belle says she found the letter he wrote when he was Mr. Tenka before Starling brought Eggman back and ruined her life. Eggman acknowledged that Starling made a mess of everything, but that putting him back to his good old self was a mistake, but a blessing for his kind. Belle says that's how Eggman feels, and she can't change that, plus she's saying goodbye since her father is gone, and she's moving on. Eggman's bewildered by the word, and rushes over to saying that she's not with him. She's against him and asks if she's planning on doing Mel Sonic tonight. Belle clarifies that she fixed him, just like all the creations you left by him. We start to hear some rumbling. Eggman asks how she managed to bypass Starline's control signal, and Belle tells him she used herself as a secure router. Eggman takes it to meet Belle in her face with Mel Sonic code directly, which Belle confers much to the Doctor's delight. He offers her a choice. Either become a mechanic, or just go back to Sonic with his friends. Of course, she said this is goodbye, and she's going back to her friends with Eggman saying that's her choice and tells her she'll be seeing him. The place starts to crumble more, and Belle tells Starling to move it since the streets cave in, but Starling is in a vegetable state, saying despite doing everything right, he's still lost, and he's a fair before this whole street of Acropolis kills him in Belle's escape. Hold up, hold up! Did you say Starling died? Yeah. Why? I mean to ask. This means he's gone for good? Looks like it. I did say he died, right? Yeah. Boss? Guys? He died? Starling 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 died? He died! Yes, he did, Lord Matthew! Starling's dead! He died! He died! Yes! He died! Hallelujah! I thought this day would never come, but it did! Ah, Lord Matthew shouts a triumph aside. Tails was wondering what happened to the place while he's taken off guard by one of Kit's water tendrils, though he spin dashes and dodges. Kit mentions that Tails can't evade him forever and have to give him, but Tails counters that Kit has to run out of water eventually, which happens right now. It turns out Kit's Hydro Kit doesn't have unlimited water since, like all big storage unit, he runs out, causing Kit to try and scoop up the water like a desperate traveler in the desert, where in search will be so mad. Tails takes advantage of this weakness by turning off the Hydro Kit before it's refilled, though Kit is now in a coma. Meanwhile, Search and Sonic continue duking out with Search, telling Sonic to fall down eventually, but the Bluebird tells her he doesn't give up that easy. Enraged, spins, Search spins like a tornado and battles to end them, though Sonic spin dashes her and throws her off balance, saying she could try because it's Henrik to fall down and hold on to Rob for dear life over a bit. Sonic calls for a 10 second truce so he could haul Surge out, but she gives Sonic a little jolt and satisfies she got the last hit. Her victory is short lived, however, because debris start falling down, probably killing Surge, but it's uncertain. Sonic mentions that's a problem with giving people choices since you can't stop them making the wrong ones. At least find Tails and Belle worrying something that happened to them, but Tails is a okay, holding Kit's lifeless body and is a little damn much of Sonic's relief. Tails brings up Sonic to speed on what transpired between him and Kit, while Sonic does the same mentioning. That search was lost to Eggman City, though he's still certain she's probably still kicking. 
That letter comes in with a full bore and is glad to the tails are both safe. Tails wonders how she came that bad into her attacking her while Sonic has now signs. Bell mentions she got metal up and running again, but he went back to his prayer life. After the full bore, she modified not to attack Sonic and Tails, but it was really friendly towards her. Tails mentioned that Starline was behind Surge, Kit, and a swarm of batting sent to the city, while Sonic says they'll have to beat him up, but Bell mentions that Starline is dead. This one will go down in VA history as one of the best. A familiar voice mentions that Sonic and Tails caught him at an awkward moment, and that Egotropolis arrived at Imperial City wasn't ready for visitors while the late Dr. Starline made a mess out of the place. And since they're guests in this new base of operations, Eggman's got to be a gracious host, saying that he and his army of bandits will give them a proper welcome to Egg Imperial City, bringing an issue for their clothes as the VA status quo is back in business. Ah, what a sudden life from beginning to end, old Matthew. This has to be the best issue in this comic series. Couldn't have said it better myself. I give this issue a 10 out of 10 since it did the impossible. Kill a Sterling, which was good since it was an annoying bastard, and. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> this has been VA Reviews.